Baseball players are strange. For a sport so driven by highly mathematical stats, a large amount of baseball players throughout history believe in total nonsense. I am of course referring to the great legacy of baseball superstitions. Today I have for you a full team in the show of players with some of the weirdest and most bizarre superstitions I could find. These are not just your everyday beliefs. These are unquestionably eccentric. Try to follow along with the game the best you can. In true superstitious fashion, something very interesting happens. Now, if you will join me for my live broadcast, let us head down to the Metrodome for my presentation. Now, what the hell is a superstition? I have a quote here from a guy, his name is George Glemp, Glempch, Glempch, I'm, I'm, it's G-M-E-L-C-H, so Glempch. Anyway, he was an ex-minor leaguer who, instead of becoming a pro leaguer, became a professor of anthropology. Quote, the most common form of magic in professional baseball is a personal ritual, prescribed form of behavior that the player scrupulously observes in an effort to ensure that things go their way. Line between a superstition and a ritual is interesting. They have to define it there as when does something go from being a ritual to a superstition? If I brush my teeth at the same time every day, is that a superstition or is it just a ritual? The line is, rituals are repeated behaviors based on defined patterns. If you just brush your teeth twice a day, it's a ritual. Where superstitions are repeated behaviors based on a belief in the absence of logic or reason that it will affect the outcome of a given situation. If you're thinking, I brush my teeth at a specific time because if I don't, nothing's going to go right, then that's where it starts to become a superstition because there is no logic or reason why brushing your teeth at 837 versus 830 is going to change everything in the world. In the context of baseball, something like stepping on the foul lines when you are coming on and off the field, that's often a thing that's thought of as bad luck. This is where it becomes superstitious because if you step on the foul lines coming on the field, the pitcher is not going to magically be able to throw harder. It's not based in any logic there. So that's where it becomes a superstition. Common ones in baseball are playing with jerseys or equipment in a certain way, think Nomar Garcia Parra, stepping on or not stepping on a specific location, uh, and then grooming habits or eating habits as well on game day. So I'm now going to start going through the players on the team here. How about that? Does that sound fun? Throw this fucking pitch. Yeah, strike out. First up, it's going to be Jorge Posada. If you've ever seen him play, he doesn't wear any batting gloves. The reason is, or what people say, at least from where he's from in the Caribbean, it's said that if uh, the player isn't wearing batting gloves, it's because they probably piss on their hands. Uh, It's thought that if you piss on your hands, it's gonna toughen them up and eliminate calluses on them. Uh, I don't know any science that supports that. So that's where it becomes a superstition. And I would never ever (laughs) want to uh, have a a game used Posada bat because it probably smells like it's pissed. Some of these are famous. Some of these I actually had to research a lot for. Oh, he took me out. He took me out. The perfect game's gone. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Charge the mound, Finley. There's Piss Boy. The, this is a very famous one. It's Jason Giambi. When he was in a slump, he would break out some special underwear, specifically a golden thong that he would wear underneath his jersey whenever he was struggling, as he believed that this would help him break out of a slump. Other New York Yankees wore it as well. People like DJ and uh, Johnny Damon. Damon was once quoted as saying, it worked, and soon the whole team was borrowing it when they needed to get a run. You're not worrying about your hands or your balance at this point. You're worried about the uncomfortable feeling you're receiving. This is a very uncomfortable golden thong too. Next up, second base, Craig Biggio. One of my all-time favorites. I'm actually wearing a Biggio jersey right now. Grooming habits wise, he was known for his very, very, very dirty helmet. You'll see it all the time. It's just covered in tar and dirt and all kinds of stuff. I like it dirty. Helmet, pretty much for a majority of his career, he only had two. It just got beat up, 
come on. <laughs> it's that golden thong right there. Golden thong! From the 90s, pretty much, till uh, his retirement, he wore a total of two helmets. Luis Gonzalez remarked one time that a bat boy once actually cleaned the helmet and Craig Biggio got really, really mad at him, so much so that he actually re-dirtied the helmet. <laughs> they had to re-dirty it so Craig would get his mojo back, which is pretty fucking funny right there. Yeah, laugh at it, Craig. You can see the dirty helmet right there. Perfect timing on my part. Next up, shortstop, is going to be Honus Wagner. Honus believed, and this is a common one, that each bat only had a certain number of hits in it. For Honus specifically, he believed that it was never more than 100. No matter the condition of the bat, at 100 hits, he would move on to the next one. He was very, very cautious of his bats. He wouldn't loan them out because he wanted all the hits for himself. Also, Waggy says to like the video and subscribe to the channel. P.H. Davis is so cool and informative and funny. You better subscribe to him. Waggy out. Below his uniform, he frequently wore women's stockings as uh, he believed that this would help him play better. For the majority of his career, he actually used the same glove. Uh, this glove was given to him by the shortstop of his day and age, and he used it for about 15 years from 1902 on. The big thing about this glove though, is that even when Honus got it, there was a big fucking hole in the middle of it, and he continued to use it. Even through the end of his career, if you see Honus in the field, you'll see a big ass hole in his glove. Now at third base, this is one of the most famous ones. Uh, I mean, it's his fucking Twitter handle, but Wade Boggs, the chicken man, for a night game, he would always take batting practice at exactly 517. He would take 150 grounders, no more and no less there. Okay. There we go. What he's most known for is before every game, he would have chicken to eat, specifically fried chicken, which sounds really good. Now that came from 1983 when he was a little bit of a rookie and not all that rich and you could afford chicken because it's pretty cheap. He would eat it before every game. He said, basically in 83, we ate chicken every day and I wound up winning a batting title in 83. So the chicken worked. Now next up is Larry Walker, another very famous one. Larry was obsessed with the number 33, specifically three and 33 by extension. In a 1993 Sports Illustrated article, he said that he was married on November 3rd at 3.33 p.m. and he had asked his phone company to give him a phone number with the most amount of threes. He would take three practice swings, or if he needed more, he would take them in sets of three, so three, six, nine, continue on. He agreed to a, you guessed it, one year, $3 million contract at one point. And one time he bought 33 tickets for section 333 at the Montreal Stadium and gave them away to charity. Now speaking of Finley, which is his crystals, playing with Arizona, he got a bag of spiritually powerful crystals from teammate Craig Council. Uh, now these crystals were put in a bag around his neck that were put together by the layers of light international now the company's website proclaims the pouch offers a layer of protection against many harmful external energy intruders that attack our bodies on a daily basis what this is according to founder dr frank seeley additionally our products support higher consciousness for sustained wellness bro what are you talking about man In right field is the great Bambino, George Ruth. Ruth always made sure to step on second base whenever he jogged in. If he ever forget, he would then run out from the dugout and kick it before the next half inning, which is the first time I've actually ever heard someone describe Babe Ruth run. Then also taking after Wagner, he would not let his teammates use his bats as he believed that there was only a certain number of hits in there. Again, taking after Wagner, he also wore women's stockings uh, during the game there. Very, very fun stuff. Now coming to the bench 
is going to be first Justin Morneau. Morneau, uh, it was known that on the way to games at the Metrodome, hey, look, that's where I'm playing. He would stop at a Jimmy John's in St. Paul and order the same meal every time. No drink is because when he got to the stadium, as he's warming up at a specific time, he would find his teammate and World Series legend, Nick Punto, and have him make up a special concoction. This was called the Punto Slurpee. It was described as half Mountain Dew, half, quote, red or orange stuff. And apparently only Nick Punto could have the right mixture ready for Justin Morneau. And at a specific time around 6 o'clock, this is when Morneau would seek out Punto. This isn't a superstition, but Morneau is Canadian. And just like Larry Walker, he also wore 33. His level of three obsession isn't as strong, but he's still obsessed with 33. Growing up, Morneau uh, lived outside of Vancouver and was a goalie. His favorite player was Patrick Waugh. So to kind of honor his legend or his icon, one, he wouldn't leave the car for any hockey event like his dad's car until 633 and then as soon as number 33 was available with the twins Morno chosen next up is going to be Tori Hunter uh Tori he had a cleaning habit here which is he loved loved sparkly white shoes before night games at exactly 640 he would grab his bottle of Mr. Bubbles and go about deep cleaning his shoes until they were sparkly white. During a game, if he dirtied his shoes up, he would then, when he got back to the dugout, clean his shoes. He would bust out the Mr. Bubbles again and go about deep cleaning it. Hunter one time said, the clubhouse guy can clean my shoes, but no one can do it as well as I can do it myself. He might clean them, but he won't see the little spot down there. I'll see it, I'll make sure it's clean. Next up is gonna be Chipper Jones. Uh, I've done a video on Chipper Jones, but I didn't mention this because it's not really relevant to his fucking 2000 campaign. The last thing Chipper would do before every game uh, at night was play computer software until about 6.55, and then he would go straight to the dugout. I guess tip for all you youngins out there trying to figure out a better strategy to hit, play solitaire. Now, next up is going to be Vlad Guerrero. Similar to Biggio, he would put his helmet through the ringer. But he would also beat it up and then have his teammates also beat it up. This is my own speculation, so there's going to be no source. But just saying, no gloves from the Caribbean, the Dominican area. Played with the Expos with the Aloos. I'm like 95% sure that Vlad Sr. probably pissed on his hands too. That's my own speculation. That's the one one I have that is speculative. This is the last one on the bench here. This is going to be Salvador Perez. He actually wears perfume behind the plate. Uh, One of his old teammates, Alcides Escobar, he would wear Victoria's Secret perfume. One day Perez was asking him, like, hey, you know, what is that? That smells good there. Uh, And he told him that was perfume, so he gave Salvador some to try out for himself. Salvador said that uh, in the first inning of the day he was wearing perfume for the first time, the umpire complimented him, saying that he smelled good, and uh, he said thank you, and then went on to have a great day. He had four hits, so since then he started wearing it pretty much all the time. Other players in the league have remarked and asked him, you know, where can you get that perfume? Pretty easy uh, answer. Fucking Victoria's Secret. There's only about a billion of them outside of every single metro city. All right, pitchers. Let's get to pitchers here. First one. This is a famous one. It's going into food, but it's because it's a specific food that I have to mention it. Jim Palmer. He would always have a stack of pancakes before each and every single one of his starts. The guy I have on the mound, Max Scherzer. His superstition is not letting anyone know what his superstitions are, which is scary. Just gonna move on. Cy Young. He was very specific about how the bats should be arranged. This guy has a really nice slur. Uh, He would always tell the bat boy to place the bats with the handles towards the infield, and if any bats were crossed or out of that way, he would not tolerate it and kind of freak out at the bat boy. Then next up is gonna be a recent guy, you know, that's an old timey fella. Alex Manoa, the all-star and Cy Young candidate. 
he said over the summer that his ritual or superstition is he wears the same pair of underwear for every single start. Yeah, I, I wear the same underwear every time I pitch. I do wash them. Last one in the rotation is the ever famous Pedro Martinez. Now, Pedro's superstition is maybe more of a team rally cry, but uh, very interesting nonetheless, is when the tension in the locker room was pretty thick, he would strip naked and then run around to get everyone all rallied up. We were struggling. You know, sometimes you come out of the showers and you see everybody like a little bit tense or whatever. I used to, I don't know if this is appropriate for me to say, but I would actually take a rally lap around the clubhouse completely naked, <laughs> and everybody would start laughing. You see me running a rally lap. Finally, we're on the bullpen. These are where it starts to get even weirder. Relievers are weird guys in general, in a good way. First up is Lee Smith. Lee would sleep for the first few innings, and then in the fifth would be woken up with a cheeseburger and his teammates yelling, Lee, time to go. Actually gonna do that. Uh, Lee, wake up. Next up is gonna be Hudson Street. Not a location or boulevard, but a person there. When he would get on a streak of saves, he would wear the same clothing until it ended. This is a quote from his catcher, John Baker. He's part owner of a clothing company. He makes $9 million a year, and he wears the same clothes three weeks in a row. Something is wrong with that. I tried to get all Super Diamond, but I had to get one common guy because he no longer has a card in the game. No good card, but that's Derek Holland. He has a kind of famous one. It's a food ritual, but it's a very weird food ritual, which is that when he was a starter, he's a relief pitcher now, he would go to Wendy's the night before and place pretty much a $30 order and then eat it all himself. If uh, Wendy's was not available, he would then go to a place like Taco Bell, and uh, he once recounted his Taco Bell order. So his Taco Bell order was four cheesy gordita crunches with Cool Ranch taco shells, a spicy volcano burrito, a chicken quesadilla, and a caramel apple empanada. How does your butthole feel from that? That, that just... Uh, uh. Next up is John Franco, famed screwballer, left-handed screwballer. Franco said was in the 90s when he was in Montreal, he was given a 1973 commemorative coin from a, quote, little Italian man in the stands. Now, he carried this commemorative coin along with stones from his parents' graves, and he said that this guy said to rub the coin for good luck this season, and I've been known to try anything. It's been working for all of us in the pen. Next up, another recent guy. This is going to be Jordan Romano. He said that he's very, very superstitious. He has to wear the same shirt every game, Pre-game in the same socks, shower in the same shower, and he will eat the same meal as much as he possibly can before a game. I have a, a ton of superstitions. I mean, I need to wear the same shirt every day, uh, pre-game, same socks. Uh, I need a shower in the same shower. I eat the same meal probably 90% of the game. So I mean, like, I'm kind of overboard, but every, everything's almost a superstition with me. Liam Hendricks, he has a fucking insane one. For the last few years, Hendricks has been seeking out help and guidance in his relief career from tarot card reader and Reiki master spiritual mentor, Roby Rios, who among other things has sent Hendricks, quote, some bracelets and some crystals and stuff that he keeps in his locker here. Bed, I sage my locker. I also saged a couple of the other guys on the team who were uh, a little bit more open to it. And then Hendrix says that Rios knows nothing about baseball, such as calling the baseball mound the mount. This is a quote from him. I should say, imagine me doing an Australian accent first. Quote, like that's the best part about it. She's not a baseball fan that's giving me information that she thinks is right. She has no idea about the game. And now the final guy I have here is probably the most uh, influential superstition in, I would say, baseball history, which is going to be Raleigh Fingers. Now, in 72, Reggie Jackson showed up to spring training sporting a mustache. When he came there, he wouldn't shave off the mustache, Reggie. Fingers and other players on the team started 
to sprout their own mustaches as well. It was kind of becoming a team thing. Baseball players had to be clean cut. Them rocking these mustaches in Oakland was a huge thing. And then ownership got supportive of it. This is Chuck Finley. This is a quote from Fingers. Quote, we thought manager Dick Williams would insist that everyone would have to shave their mustache off, including Reggie. That was the only reason we did it. When team owner Chuck Finley learned of the mustaches, he said that they would be a great gimmick to bring people in the ballpark. So he told us if you make the ball club out of spring training and have a mustache on opening day, he'd give you $300. Finger said, quote, yep, the only reason I grew this, and then in parentheses, mustache, was for $300. Then we started winning, and since baseball players are the most superstitious animals in the world, we didn't want to shave them. So for $300, he grew a mustache pretty much for his entire career, which is fantastic. That was my team. Did anyone surprise you? Who was your favorite? Why does Bob Locker keep appearing in my videos? I could not fit all the players I found with weird superstitions onto one team. So here are a few honorable mentions that did not make the cut. Thank you again for watching, and if you haven't already, please smash that like and subscribe button. I've heard if you do, subscribing gives you a layer of protection against harmful external energy intruders that attack your bodies on a daily basis. And liking the video supports a higher consciousness for sustained wellness. All I'm saying is, the choice is yours. As for that something interesting that happened in the game, my truly superstitious team brought me good luck. I threw a perfect game on the Hall of Fame difficulty, which for someone who sucks at the game is an achievement there. Until next time, I'm Golden Thong Davis, and I'm gonna. Waggies, always watching.